everybody, it's Kristen and we are going to talk about brows today. As you can see, brows make a huge difference. I do not have my brows on yet. Um, I thought I would kind of start the video just to show you a little bit if you kind of think, um, maybe doing my brows wouldn't make a difference, you know, as much as some people do. For me, and I think it kind of depends on who you are, for me, it makes a really large difference. Um, so I think let's just talk a little bit if you can stand looking at me. <laughs> My brows. I want to talk a little bit about my brow journey, so to speak, and then um, I'll show you how I fill them in. And, and I will do this, you know, kind of, I'll, I'll try to very condense it for you. I didn't do anything to my brows. I didn't fill them in. I didn't have them waxed. I didn't have them threaded. I didn't do anything like that until after I was out of college. I know this because I have my college graduation picture in the other room and I can still see that I have quite the little almost unibrow sort of thing going on. If I can figure out a way to get a picture of that without a glare on it, I will try to stick it in here and try to ignore the cheesiness of the picture. So I, I don't remember exactly when the first time it was, but I want to say it was a couple of years after I graduated from college. So I'm going to say late, late 90s, early 2000s, something like that, was the first time I actually did anything with my brows. And I started with waxing. I didn't do it myself. I didn't even pluck my brows back in the day. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe because my mom didn't. I, I don't know. So I just kind of, well, and two, I grew up in the 80s and 90s. And, and I know that for a while, really thin brows were the thing. But I think I was too young then. And I want to say maybe in the, it was in the 90s that fuller brows were, if I remember right, I could be wrong. At any rate, I just know that I didn't do anything with them. I wasn't aware of my brows. And then, like I said, I started doing waxing and that sort of thing. And then shortly after I started watching YouTube, I wasn't making YouTube videos, I started getting them threaded. And I liked how they looked with threading the best. I felt like it gave me a much cleaner sort of shape and that sort of thing. Um, but I will tell you this, it has been probably two or three years since I've had them threaded, waxed, anything. And I think that's because of so many years of doing it, the hair just doesn't really, just didn't start to come back. The reason that I went into that a little bit is because, um, I had been asked several times to do sort of like my brow routine as far as not just filling them in, but you know, like maintenance. And this is it. A tweezers is all at this point that I have to do. And I don't, I don't know if it's my heritage or what, but I don't really get a ton there. So all I generally do is every, I don't know, I was gonna say every five, six days, something like that, I just go into my big mirror and just kind of pluck what's out of the line that I sort of have here. So um, that that's it, that's the extent of what I do as far as maintenance. I, I, I know that I'm lucky, I have friends that have to pluck every single day, um, but that at this point, because of the threading and the waxing stuff that I did, you know, below and above, which I, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have done anything above, but, and then in between, not a ton of hair really grows anymore. So there you have it. All right. So let me get into the actual brow routine. I'm just going to, so that these aren't driving me crazy. I'm just going to pin my back, my bangs back a little bit here. Hopefully I don't put a little, I need one of those little Velcro things that like, you know, doesn't make marks in your hair. Okay, so as you guys know, if you haven't seen my video, and I will link it below if you haven't, on the three skinny brow, skinny brow pencils that I used, um, the one that I liked the best was the L'Oreal. And I know you guys give me a lot of suggestions as far as Clinique was another one, and... Oh, uh, somebody mentioned another one. Dior, they said, had a really nice one. I feel like somebody said Elf did as well. So I may try some other ones, but at this point, the Clinique or the L'Oreal is my best. I'm going to zoom you in a little All bit. Right. Hopefully, I've moved you in enough. Um, if anybody's going to ask about this mirror, I almost always get questions about it. This is the Zadro mirror. There are a bunch of different models. This particular model isn't available anymore, but I love it. Okay, so I'm just going to move, <laughs> move this up a little bit. I do have a little redness on this eye in case you are curious. My allergies are driving me crazy. So. I'm not saying this is right or wrong, this is just what I do. I take the skinny pencil and I sort of, uh, sort of kind of start where I think I want, this is going to be tricky, where I want that brow to end up. And I'm not pressing very hard at all. And um, I generally go up to where I want my arch to be. And you can kind of do this, go from your, the edge of your nose 
like that, sort of like that, you can kind of see where you're supposed to be. I think it's important to to kind of follow your natural brow. If you go too much out of it, then it's going to look too fake. And then from there, I just kind of, you can kind of see I'm just lightly bringing it down. I'm just trying to get a rough shape at this point. And I'll go back and fill this in, but one thing I want to show you, when I'm, when I'm doing, when, when I'm filling in down here, it's really tricky for me because I'm not sure the right words to say, but... I don't go like this way. I kind of go this way. So once, as I'm filling in here, so I'm, I'm going to go down here. As I'm filling in here, you can see I'm going all the way up here. I'm not like trying to follow some particular line here. Again, I feel like it makes it look more natural. So I'm just kind of going up here. And then when, I, when I'm filling in the tail, I stay with that sort of upward sort of motion and I clean up as I go if I get something where I don't want it. The point I'm trying to make is that I'm not going you know what I mean? I'm not making straight lines and that helps it look more natural. I'm going to fill this back in. There really isn't an exact routine that I do like I do this part first every time or I do this. I just kind of go where I want see it filled in next. You can see I'm raising my eyebrows to do that. I don't know why I do that. Maybe it's helpful. Try it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have the bus going by anymore at 6 30 in the morning so that I have a rough idea of what time it is because you know school's out. And again I wish I could I wish you could feel the pressure. I'm just really very lightly filling in the, I guess the car decided to go by just to let me know what time it is. It's actually 6.40. I'm running a little late today. Okay, so I kind of have that filled in. Then I'll flip it around and, and I do this a lot. I think I probably do it more when I'm not talking through it, but I lay down some brow, pro, brow product and then run the brush through it and I think it just helps it be more natural. And you can pull this out as far as you want. For the longest time, I think I probably stopped right about here. And then my friend Rich, <clears throat> excuse me, who you guys saw, I did that um, glowy skin from, you know, mature or dry skin a video I did with him. He, whenever he does my brows, he pulls them out further. And I always liked how they look, so I've started doing that this year. Just making sure everything's filled in right. And there you go. Now, um, I won't, I won't bore you with showing you two of them, probably. But the other thing that I do, and I've talked about this a bunch, like in Get Ready With Me videos, I think. But I just take my, whatever powder foundation I'm using, and this is the Beauty Junkie Taper Blending Brush. And I feel like my brows just look a little bit more part of me if I go over them a little bit with some powder foundation. And then they don't look a little they don't look quite so stark and just look better. So with a brow, without a brow. I always find it tricky. For some reason, my left eye doesn't, my left brow doesn't come in quite as far as my other one. So I try to very lightly sort of make them match up a little bit. But again, as everybody always says, sisters, not twins. And I just do my best, sort of, to make them not look like they aren't even related. And for some reason, this brow always goes better than this brow. I don't know if it's just because it's my right hand on my right side. I'm not really sure. But, you know, eventually I get them to look close. And it doesn't, I don't feel like it takes me that long. And then again with the powder foundation. Alright, so, hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully that was helpful. I f if you look at it, like I feel like it looks a little bit harsher in the viewfinder than it does in person. But I will do a lot of just a little soft blending, like with the tiniest touch of your finger. Not enough to rub it completely away, but that's another little trick that I found to make it look a little bit more natural. So again, that was the L'Oreal Brow Stylist. I used the shade in Brunette. They unfortunately only have three shades. I wish they would bring out some more. That was something that I meant to mention in the in the video, video review that I did, but um, again, I'll list that below if you want to see the other kind of skinny brow products that I've tried. The other thing I want to mention, and somebody asked me this in a video or Snapchat or something, I can't remember, 
which brow brush do I use because so many of them that they have, and I'm trying to see if I can find one here to show you guys. Yeah, here. Like I have one from Tarte that has a spoolie on one end and then this little, you know, sort of angled brush thing on the other end. And she said, you know, she wants one that just, with just the spoolie on it. And I totally understand that. So the one that I have is the one from MAC. I don't remember what the number is. Again, I'll, I'll list it below. But the reason that I have the MAC one is just because back in the day when I was first starting with things, I thought I had to have everything MAC. You know what I mean? Back when I first started watching YouTube. We all think that at some point, right? So the one that I have is MAC, but any spoolie brush will work fine for you. Or even the, I don't have one right here, even the disposable ones like that I keep in my kit and that sort of thing will work, whatever. So if you have a skinny pencil without a, whoops, say drop it, without a spoolie on the end, or if you have a pencil that you like, but you want to kind of try that sort of smooth it out spoolie method, just grab something disposable that will work just as so well. So I hope that this was helpful. So I, you know, I get so many questions on it and I never put it in the get ready with me video because I feel like it takes long to kind of talk through it and to do them kind of takes a few minutes and so it's something I can eliminate. But now I have a video that I can refer people to. So, all right, on the rest of my safe face, it's the same base as I've been wearing, the Guerlain Tenue de Perfection mixed with the MAC Mineralized. Uh, for blush today, and actually I use it as eyeshadow a little bit as well, I have the By Terry. And this is the Sun Designer palette in number two, Light Tan Vibe. So I have just these two mixed as my blush. For my eyeshadow today as a base, I'm, I'm working through this, you guys. This is much, much smaller than it was the last time I showed it in an update. This is the, I don't even know what it's called anymore. I'm sorry. It's the Silky Eye Pen in like the champagne color. And I have that all over my lid. And then um, a subscriber asked me if the shade in this, um, and actually a very, very, very long time subscriber, her name is Carol, asked me if the sh pink champagne from Anastasia was the same as the shade in the Gilded Age. And it's not, but it reminded me about this trio. So I've been using it quite a bit lately. But today all I have is that top shade. This is limited edition, but this is a great little palette for summer. And then what I did was as transition, I used this shade right here. And then to deepen things up, I use kind of a combination of this shade and this shade right here. So I just played right within that palette. A little bit of liner on my tight line, and I think that's everything. On my lips today, I have the NARS Velvet something gloss pencil, and this is in the shade New Lover. And I think that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day, and in everything that you do, be beautiful. Bye!